Hi there, friends. Concept figures are becoming more and more important in all kinds of contexts. For example, fellowship and grant applications, but also in papers. And so this video is about how to design a powerful concept figure. Now, first of all, this is going to be a process of continual refinement. You're not going to sit down like Picasso and uh, draft a perfect concept figure at first try. I mean, this, maybe it happens to you, but never happens to us. We often go through many drafts and sometimes that includes trying out completely different ways of you know, depicting what we are after. So the first point is really to say, be patient. This isn't easy and start early. What is a really good idea is to start with a simple sketch, like just a um, little sketch, a pencil sketch on a piece of paper, and then show it to your colleagues or your co-authors and see what they think. Do they get it? <laughs> or does it re really require a lot of extra ex explanation? And if it does, maybe we need to go back to the drawing board and try again. But that also means don't put in all your artistic energy in, in, in that first draft. Make it a simple rough draft and just see if this works in principle. And only when you have established that it does, then go for the refinement and then be an artist. And now having said that, here are some 10 points that I think are important when you want to make a concept figure that really rocks. The first point is super important. Make sure that that figure really captures well and encapsulates the main point that you are making in your text. So make sure there is a good correspondence between your figure and the text. And that means designing very early on on a very clear and concise message of that concept figure. This concept figure is to show that and then stick to this. Like if it's an overview figure for a review or for a grant proposal, it's very important that the various elements of that figure correspond nicely to the different text portions, for example, to the work packages or to the subsections of your review. They should really appear explicitly in the structure of that concept figure so that there is a very nice correspondence between the figure and the text. So they complement each other well and help each other out. Second point, Pay close attention to the flow of that figure. This is difficult to get right, but make sure that the viewer's attention is drawn to the points that you want to emphasize. And also realize that the eye tends to move over a figure in a certain direction, for example, from left to right and also from the top to the bottom. So sometimes when you have figures that violate that, it becomes a less pleasant viewing experience or it's more difficult to understand what that figure is about. So Pay attention to the viewing direction of the eye and where are the main points that you want to draw attention to and then emphasize them in the figure. Third point is one of my pet peeves. Make sure that the figure elements really mean something in that figure and that they mean the same thing. And the best example of that and where that often goes wrong is arrows. So if a, a simple you know, black arrow with a certain arrowhead means something entirely different in that figure. Maybe in, in one case it means causation and in another case in that figure it means carbon flow, then something's wrong. So you gotta really make sure that the sort of the visual vocabulary that you're using it is consistent in that figure and that you're not mixing things up. So that might, for example, include using different arrows if the arrows really mean different things. You can differentiate, differentiate them by, um, you know, arrow style or by color or whatever, but make sure that the things that are the same really mean the same things in your figure. There can also be other symbols, not just arrows. Next point is choose a color palette that is professional looking and that works well together. So there is plenty of information online about these color palettes. There's a whole lot of different schemes and make sure you're not just randomly mixing colors because it doesn't look good. Also, don't make it too colorful. I mean, choose a nice color palette that looks stable and professional. Also consider that there are people with um, color blindness, so there is optimized color palettes for these cases, and so you shouldn't use colors that some people simply cannot distinguish. Fifth point, I think it's very important to keep a figure as simple as possible, unless your point is to emphasize the complexity. But generally, you're trying to make sense of complexity in a concept figure. And so it's important to keep it as concise and as free of additional stuff as possible. Which often means when you have your first 
draft ready, it means simplify and declutter. And I realize to some extent this is a matter of style, but I think when you have a choice, opt for a lean design that's very clear in the information that it brings across. Six point, have as little as possible unused white space. Um, that is often a problem in figures when there is like some quadrant, for example, of a figure unused. Well, then you should rethink how that figure really is designed because you should avoid having large unused areas because that tends to make the figure look bloated and empty and unbalanced. So make sure you use the space efficiently and you need to realize that when it's, this is for a journal article that you often have some limitations on the size of the figure and in some cases also maybe the shape and dimensions of the figure. So you have to be able to work within these constraints. Point seven, don't make things too small, especially the text should always be easily readable. And, but also the figure elements themselves shouldn't be too small and detailed. And because consider that maybe you're drawing this at a much larger scale, but in the end this will be shrunk in the particular manuscript. And then when people view it together with the text, some things may be really difficult to read and understand when, then, when they're too small. Point eight, use one font and one font only. Decide on one font, stick with that font, and then have as few variants of this, like bold or italics or different colors, as you can. Because nothing is more confusing than, you know, having all kinds of different text all over the place. Keep it, keep it as clean as possible, as simple as possible. And make sure that when you use a different type of text, like size, a different size or a bold, that it, that it really means something rather than just randomly having text of different arrangements all over the place. It's a common problem, but what you should definitely avoid is different font types. It should always be one font in the figure and then have as few variants as you can get away with. Point nine, don't mix styles. Don't have like parts of the figure that are super realistic, almost like photographs or are photographs and then having very abstract parts to it. There may be some situations where that is called for, but mostly it's not. So make sure you have one uniform style, which is either working with very realistic depictions or that is typically in concept figures, more abstract and don't mix it. And the last point is explain your visual vocabulary. Explain what the different arrows mean. For example, in the figure legend or in the caption of the figure, unless of course they're self-explanatory but most of the time different arrow types are not going to be self-explanatory so you will need to give some help to the reader um, about what these different arrow types for example in your figure mean. What is important is to think of the figure as a standalone item. I mean, yes it is in a text and corresponds with the text and complements it but as much as possible that figure should stand up on its own, which means it should be really sufficiently explained. In the figure caption, for example, you should say like this figure shows this and this and the components mean that and that and the point of this is to show such and such. So be as explicit as possible in the caption and then use text and labels and legends that explain different items in the figure so that really people don't need to necessarily refer back to the text to understand what that figure is all about. So those are my key points for designing conceptual figures. We actually have a lot of fun with them. I think that they're super important. And I'd love to hear from you about your experiences with conceptual figures. And if you have any additional points to share, I'd love to read about them. So with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.